Lintrol allows you to do uh, dynamic modal analysis to get the natural frequencies and modes of vibration of uh, any 2D structure or for beams, trusses, frames, etc. Assuming linear elastic behavior. I'm going to use this uh, steel beam, simply supported steel beam on a span of 10 meters. Um, a universal beam bending about its major axes, and these are its properties taken from the steel tables. The I value the second moment of area, the moment of inertia, the cross sectional area. Um, so, first of all, we need to set up that beam in Linpro. And I'm doing, going to do a very the simplest analysis first, just using assuming just one mass lumped in the at mid span. Because the way Linpro does not calculate the continuous mass of the structure, you must assign it as a concentrated or lumped masses at particular nodes. So we'll just uh, want So there's our 10 meter beam and um, and it supports at both ends. The Set up the number of properties as you want to, to, in units or in kilonewtons and meters. So 1.29 to the power minus 2 is the area, and 6.15 e minus 4 is the. And change that, and OK that. So just confirm, yeah, it's OK. Um, now. We need to uh, assign masses, define masses. Now these red buttons up here refer to defining masses and running the the modal analysis. There is a more advanced form of dynamic analysis over here where you can apply dynamic lo time loads varying with time. For instance, somebody walking across the bridge or something like that. But here I'm just doing the modal, the, the, getting the natural modes of vibration of the structure. Okay, so first step is to define masses. Now the only units uh, Limpro accepts for masses is metric tons, okay, which is a, a thousand kilograms is a metric ton. So the total weight of this, or the total mass of this beam is uh, it's 101 kilograms per meter over 10 meters, so it's uh, 1.01 tons. You can call it, give it a name, uh, it's it's uh, sorry, uh, 1010 kilograms. It would be that. Now you're going to define that. Okay, so you define it first of all, and then you select a node or one or more nodes, and you assign that mass to that node. So I'm going to assign it to node one, and click OK on that. That's all you have to do. You don't have to apply any loads. You do. It does have to be a stable structure, so the supports must be in place, and we then can run the modal analysis. It asks how many modes do you want to search for, and we'll see because there's only one mass, it is actually only going to produce one mode. So, but we can leave the four and click on that. So it gives us the shape, the the basic mode shape of which we can exaggerate. So that's a simple mode shape, and it gives us some frequencies. Now up here we can click, and we'll see there is only one mode available. Now it gives the the time. In seconds, the period of the fabric. The best way to work out or to find the frequencies is just to click on this uh, table button here, and it gives us some our eigenvalues, which is omega squared. Um, this is omega, and omega divided by two pi. This is the, the number we're really interested in. So it's telling us that the natural frequency of that st structure, as defined, is twelve point four six. Point four seven hertz or cycles per second, which is fairly high and uh, quite acceptable in, in any structure. Now, to get more modes and to get a more maybe more accurate uh, results, we need to break the, the structure into smaller pieces, if you like, and um, lump the masses at more nodes. So 
the closer we get in, in, in reality, of course, the, the, the mass is continuously spread out along the beam. So the, the closer we get to that, the closer we get to the correct answer, the theoretical answer. So in this case, I have uh, set up uh, three nodes to lump the masses so they have the same member properties as before. And the if you notice that the nodes are not exactly at the they're not at the quarter points. What I've done there is I've tried to say, well, a third of of the length, so 3.33 meters, the first 3.33 meters, I've concentrated the mass of that there. So this is one if we look at the we see have 1.667 meters in for node two. Node uh, three is in the middle, that's fine, and node four is over at 8.33. So again, I'm just I've split the, the beam into three equal lengths and then centered the mass in the middle of that. You have to have nodes defined in Limpro um, to assign masses. If we look at the masses, so I have 340 kilograms, which is one third the mass of the total beam, and it, it is assigned to nodes uh, two, three, and four. There's no option to assign masses to members. They have to be assigned to at nodes. Okay. So if we now run that dynamic analysis, we get the first mode again. But now if we click on this, we see there are more modes. There. So that's the second mode of vibration, and uh, higher and uh, higher mode. And we see it has a higher frequency, and that's the third mode. Okay. So again, mathematically, if there are only three masses moving in the y direction, we can have only um, three modes. Okay, that's just a, a point to note that the mass, yeah, I've, I've defined the masses as in the y direction. You can, um, again, because I'm interested in the vertical nodes, if you're interested in horizontal modes, say for frame, you need to assign masses in the x direction and or in the y direction. So it gets more complex there. And rotational masses as well, which gets quite complex. But um, so I'm, I'm just interested in the vertical modes of vibration. Uh, if we look at the tabulated results here, we now get uh, three modes, and again the the natural frequency seventeen point six five hertz, quite different from the twelve point four seven. Okay, with the single mass, I, I look at the theoretical results uh, shortly, and compare them. Sixty eight, much higher um, frequency for the second mode, and one hundred and eleven for the third mode. Okay, so we'll compare those uh, with the theoretical results. Now I have this is a model with ten nodes. Okay, so um, again, dividing it into one meter segments and putting and putting each no, node at the center of that segment. So this first node is 0.5 of a meter in. They're all spaced one meter apart, and then the last node is 0.5 meters from the end. The mass point is one zero. There is that limitation that it will only accept two decimal places in the ton. So that is a slight. Um, well, becomes a bit of a problem as the masses get uh, smaller. So there is a bit of an approximation there. It should really be 0 0.101, but it, it only takes two decimal, it ignores any more than two decimal places. And the, the units down at the bottom don't affect this here. It's always in tons. Okay, so if we run that and uh, get that, we get the same. Uh, the second mode, the same should have the third mode and the fourth mode. Okay, so it's a, uh, if we tabulate the results, we see 70.85, 71.4, 160.5, and again, that 160 is quite different from the 111 we got, and then 284. So, very extremely high frequency, extremely high natural frequency at that complex mode. Now, we can compare the theoretical results with this and see how, how accurate these results are based on the theory and how many nodes do we need, how many masses do we need to, to get the accurate results. Now these are the results of the various Limpro analysis that I did, compared with the, some theoretical formulae from some standard texts on dynamic analysis of structures. For a simply supported beam, if we look at this formula, the first natural frequency is 1 over 2 pi by pi squared over L squared by the square root of ei over rho times a. Now, in this brackets, this is effectively the square root of k over m. ei is the, the stiffness, bending stiffness, rho times a is the mass. And, um, okay, the, the, yes, well, ei over l 
I suppose more strictly would be the the, the stiffness. Uh, so the L squared can come. Yeah, uh, is that right? No. Well, the L it does relate to the longer the the beam, the less stiff it is. So that's why it's on the basically. So the one over two pi is the the natural frequency omega divided by two pi. Okay. So the results. For uh, this steel beam, which has in fact has a mass of 101 kilograms per meter, the first frequency comes out at 17.76. Second frequency is four times that. The second, fre third frequency is nine times that. As you see from the, and that comes from the, the maths of the problem. Okay. Now, if because of the limitation in Limpro of um, the two decimal places in the mass, I've, I've also calculated the theoretical natural frequency if you use 100 kilograms per meter. And that comes out slightly higher, so lighter. Same stiffness, higher mass, um, sorry, same stiffness, lower mass, increases the natural frequency slightly. Okay, so there, that's the target I'm looking for. Now, Limpro with 10 masses, or the, the last one I showed, matches those pretty uh, exactly for the first two frequencies. The third frequency is sli very slightly different 160.66, 165.55. I did uh, uh, the one mass, a single mass in mid span gives only one mode and it gives 12.47, which is a good bit different from the 17.85. Three masses were getting pretty accurate for the first mode. Second mode is reasonably accurate, 68.38 against 71.4. I also ran one with five masses. Again, the first frequency is, is spot on, the second one is pretty close, and the third one uh, is also. Uh, it's not bad, but with the three masses, this third frequency is, is quite poor. Okay. With the ten masses, they're all very good. So the the the, the lesson there is that uh, for the higher modes of vibration, you need more, you need to a more refined model. Okay, for the lowest modes of vibration, a moderately refined model, in this case, three or five masses, three, four, five, would be perfectly fine. So it's a matter of judgment. You know, in, in reality, you could start increasing the number of masses and, and seeing what difference is making. So if you looked at that, for instance, going from 12.47 to 17.65, that's a big jump. But then moving on 70.8, that's quite a small jump. So we could say, okay, we're, although we don't generally for a structure know what the theoretical answer is, we can say the difference between a three mass and five masses is very small. And again, similarly here, you know, if we went from three to five to 10, we can see we're converging pretty closely to the result, and again here. Okay, that's a big jump, so we might need to do from from one hundred and eleven to hundred fifty seven. So we might go up to the ten mass, but the, the ten from five to ten, not a, not not a big jump. So the incremental change is going to get smaller, and um, so we can be reasonably confident that we are at the converging to the right answer. Um, and an important point in in structures in general is that the support conditions, the modeling support conditions, can influence the answer quite significantly. That's true for kind of trusses, certainly arch bridges um, and 3D structures, or, or say 2D structures. Uh, with the simply supported beam, it doesn't actually matter, again, theoretically, but um, as you model more complex structures, the, the support conditions can make a, a difference, you know, can change the frequency by 20, 30 percent, but changing it as as fix a pin support to a roller support, you know, can change it uh, significantly. So the ideal, of course, there is that the model, the theoretical model, represents the reality as closely as possible, and that's with support conditions. And support conditions vary over time as corrosion and various things happen to to bridge bearings, for example. So. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's a key source of uncertainty.